Now, I've realized that I talk about a lot of ideas on this channel, and I have this tendency to go up in the clouds, you know, pursuing platonic forms up there. You know, sometimes you forget to come down and talk about something that's a little more down to earth. So, Recently, I've been thinking about this idea, or rather, this concept of self-discovery. And this question kept on popping to my head, which is, you know, what is self-discovery really? What is there to discover? And who are we discovering, really? If you take a closer look at your identity, at your personality, and at whatever it is that's sitting there watching this video right now, you'll very quickly realize that whoever you are right now as an identity, is probably like the product of many complicating influences out there and many of which you weren't even aware of, but somehow they shaped you into the person that you are today. I want to talk about my own journey of becoming a YouTuber, my own journey of um, morphing myself into this literary nutcase that's speaking into a camera right now. I do realize that I am human, that ideas cannot really take you up in the clouds, that sometimes it's healthy to come back down a little bit and to take stock of whatever the hell happened for the past few years and to kind of realize that we are indeed the products of many complicating influences out there. So today here is my story of how I ended up here in front of this camera, doing what I'm doing right now, reading the kind of books that I'm reading right now. Here it is. So to many people's surprise, I wasn't actually much of a literary nutcase at all. About three years ago, I became fascinated with um, the art of theoretical physics, and I was totally, totally mesmerized by every single little thing in that field. So I wanted to figure it out. So very early on, I had this like spirit of discovery, should I say, toward the subject of theoretical physics. And then about a year later, I got this opportunity to try out for a selective sort of like engineering and physics and medicine focused elite science school. So basically, if you're around a bunch of nerds that are passionate about science and engineering, you know, that's basically the school. It was literally Hogwarts for like science nerds. Naturally, being the kind of like scientifically inclined person that I was, I went into the school and I thought something awesome was going to come out of it because during the holidays, I was just nose deep into solving physics problems and mathematical problems. But something happened which really flicked the light switch on in my head, which really made me realize that probably what I was looking for in that school, it just simply wasn't there. What I was looking for was a sense of discovery. What I was searching for desperately was a sense that I was discovering something new and learning something new every single day. But for some reason, that same passion and drive that I had for solving problems throughout the holidays, when I entered the school, when I was assigned the assignments, when I was assigned the lectures and the homework, somehow that spirit of discovery just completely went away. And education gradually became this process of mechanically regurgitating things back onto the, to the test papers. And for some reason, that just completely rubbed me the wrong way. It's very difficult back then for me to let go of something or for me to stomach the realization that probably without the spirit of discovery, that physics probably isn't going to be the feel that I'm going to survive in. On one hand, I'm a very intuitive person, so the way that I solve problems isn't exactly through a process of, you know, drilling hard, isn't exactly through a process of repetitively practicing the same thing over and over and over again. I did see the value of it, but my brain just wasn't buying it. I really loved the leaps in logic. I really loved solving problems intuitively, and that was my forte, and that school wasn't exactly the environment to exercise that kind of forte. And also what was really interesting in that environment was that everyone, every one of the students, because they were so intellectually competent, they sort of bred this very unhealthy sort of environment for competition. And I just absolutely despised that kind of like having to keep up with the pack, having to keep up with the Joneses in a, in a very intellectual sense. So for the first four to five months of being at that school, um, I felt really, really down. So I had lapses of going in and going out, and for a few days I didn't go to school because I was just so sort of stuck in a stuck in the mud, so to speak. And I didn't exactly feel like my strength was exercised, which was the strength of solving problems intuitively. Over time, the mechanical process of drilling really got to me, and this entire thing sort of like blew up halfway through the year that I basically went into the deeper end of reading philosophy books. You know how like younger people, when they get into a rut, like a very existential kind of rut, they'll do anything to fend off that dread. And reading was the thing that really got me 
out of that rut that I was in. Because I hated the mechanical process of studying mathematics and physics and chemistry so much that I completely swan the pendulum to the other side of the spectrum. During my free time, I would just read non-stop, you know, anything. I remembered that I read a lot of Foucault and read a lot of these like edgy postmodern philosophers. And I thought that was kind of like my escape. That was kind of like my way of extricating myself out of this entire quagmire that I, that I got myself into. You know, it's probably well deserved, but you know, I became kind of like a cafe emo. Physically, I was in a classroom, but mentally I was off thinking about Foucault, thinking about Derrida, and thinking about all these like crazy, <laughs> crazy postmodern philosophers that I was reading at the time. That over time, this real shift occurred within me, this real like transition occurred within me, which made me realize that, holy shit, maybe my strength for solving problems intuitively shouldn't really be applied to engineering or mathematics, because mathematics and engineering, they are inherently sort of like mechanical pursuits that you have to have the kind of steady personality to sort of stick through that entire boring process. But for me as a person that really enjoyed leaps in logic and leaps in kind of like problem solving, I instantly fell in love with philosophy and you know I was very much invested in my English classes more than any of the other scientific classes that I was taking at the time. I became a very good English student but you know I was a terrible terrible um, mathematics student and chemistry student. At that point I basically have given up on this entire mathematical venture should I say. And then one event happened that just completely turned the table around. Toward the end of the first year at this sort of engineering school, I went to an open day at a university uh, in the city. So basically I took a train there and I went straight to the philosophy section because at the time I was very much invested in reading everything that I can get my hands on. So I started chatting with these philosophy professors and I started asking them about, you know, what it's like to study university philosophy. So we got into a very long conversation. Then what happened was these two professors actually invited me to listen to their lectures on the following day. But that was on a Sunday and on Monday I had school. So if I were to say yes, I was going to skip a day of high school and you know, I'll take an entire day of university philosophy classes. So being the nutcase that I was, I, I said yes. So I basically handed in a note and I basically just said to my um, home group teacher that I won't be here for the entire day and I didn't exactly specify why. So off I go into the city. For that entire day, I went to the university and I took all the lectures and it was just one of the most transformative experiences ever. So that's the moment when I kind of realized that you can do that kind of stuff as your degree. You can do an arts degree and love it. You can study and you can learn and love the process. Of course, literature and philosophy sort of played to the strength of um, solving problems in a very non-linear kind of fashion. So I instantly fell in love with um, the subject of philosophy. And back then I knew that I was going to major in arts. The weeks that followed my little excursion, um, we had to submit the course applications for the final year at the engineering school. So you basically have to fill out all of your course preferences for the following year. So I did something really drastic. I did something just completely out of the map. So I basically crossed out engineering mathematics and I crossed out chemistry and replaced those two subjects with history and philosophy because I was never formally enrolled in any history classes before. So I was basically starting from ground zero if I were to go into history and for philosophy, it was the same case. So. I was starting from ground zero, pursuing these two subjects that I had zero academic um, experiences in. And for that one year, everything just kind of flowed. So I've enjoyed every second of um, history. I've enjoyed every second of learning about people of the past, learning about the French and American Revolution. And I really think that my studies into the French Revolution really cultivated this really deep love for the French language because there were certain expressions in the textbook that were in French. I remembered that whenever I encountered one of these passages, I searched up basically the original pronunciation for these words. Over the course of my studies in the French Revolution, I've basically, you know, had a whole bag of like French expressions up my sleeve. And that's why French sort of became a thing of its own. And, and I think for now, next year, second year university, um, I basically will be majoring in French and literature. And right on the brink of having this humanitarian kind of awakening in my head, um, 
I became obsessed with um, the art of writing because I read so much throughout my emo period that I, you know, naturally became very, very curious about this entire discipline, which is, um, which is the art of writing. So I started journaling a lot and I started writing a lot of things on the side just for the pure pleasure of it. And around March last year, I basically had this holy shit moment of like, the first idea for a novel came to me. And then and there, I, I just thought to myself, I, I, I just had to write this piece. Keep in mind that prior to that holy shit moment, um, I've been writing basically for, you know, the entirety of my, you know, adolescent years. Fan fiction, I started writing fan fiction when I was 13. So writing was always like a constant thing in the background of all these like humanitarian struggles. So that writing experience, that love for the craft combined with this newfound appreciation for the disciplines in the humanities. And I knew then and there that I had to write my first novel. So being the obsessive wreck that I was, I wrote my first novel. This book was very important for me in a sense that it brought me into the field of writing. It threw me into the deep end of drafting a novel and then getting it self-published. And you know that entire process, it's just one of the most transformative processes ever. So I finished writing The Learn of Disguise and you know, it's kind of like, it's writing was literally a drug for me. I couldn't at all get away from the desk and sometimes I would write for the first two hours of the day um, before I go to school because I would just get so absorbed into the story. I would just get so, so lost in the world that I've created for myself. And I think writing is something that, I, that I'll keep doing until the day I die. It's literally that deep of an obsession. And here we are along the process. I've actually recorded a lot of what had happened on this YouTube channel. So if you scroll back to some of the earlier videos, I started talking about, you know, the cons of a very mechanical type of education. So along the way, you can sort of see this transformative process taking place on me already, but um, never had I actually, you know, taken a step back to look at this entire thing in a very narrative kind of sense. And to bring this video to an end, I want you to think about this original point that I've talked about at the beginning of this video. You are a product. Your identity is a product of many complicating influences out there and many of which you probably weren't even aware of. And the process of self-discovery is really the process of being aware of who you are and being aware of how you feel about things. Can you at all stand a chance of properly discovering who you are? I think with a solid understanding of who you are, you can be as awesome as you can be. And that's all I have for today. If you like this video, be sure to sign up for the newsletter for upcoming silly projects. My new novel, L'Académie, drew on my own experience of suffering kind of in this like very stifling environment of um, high school education. And I sort of wrote that as a response and as sort of a reflection on the entire system of education. So I hope that you're very excited for this upcoming novel and I'm certainly very excited for it. So if you want the latest updates for that novel, click the link in the description down below to get access to the latest updates. Anyway, that's all I have for today and I'll catch you guys in the next one.